Okay, so today I'm going to have a speech on my personal idea about a step back and a better life. Well, in the past, when I was young, my parents had a great ambitious to let me do the best in everything, and they never gave me a chance to think of the truth. I got into arguments with my parents at this point for so many times. Last week, I played a game of chess, which left the greatest impression on me. That game was really unforgettable to me. Before the game, someone told me that your opponent this time is the best teenager player in the province. It made me nervous before the game. However, after thinking about every step he chose and decision he made, I could not believe that he was the best one because he does not seem as smart as I thought. So I immediately looked for an opportunity to attack and deal with him quickly. At that time, I can no longer control myself, count down, thinking about whether to take a step back to make the victory safer. No. However, I was underestimated the ability of my opponent. When he saw it, with a faint smile on his face, and he literally put a piece of chess onto the board. At that moment, I was shocked because although I had surrounded the place, he had controlled the whole situation with one piece. So, as expect, I lost again. When I got home, I thought of the game again, and I gradually realized that it was a strategy developed by my opponent. He took a step back and made me think less. He made me intro track and then won me without difficulty. Maybe this is a gap between me. And the professional players. <clears throat> so far, I will still regret the game of chess. If I could take a step back, it was still unknown that who would win or who would lose. In fact, I think my opponents not only played a game with me, but also taught me a lesson of taking a step back. A step back is always a good attitude in life. We can apply this wisdom to life, such as communicating with people and doing things. I think everyone here has an experience of being arguments with your parents. <laughs> Who can calm down and listen to the opinions of your parents? Please raise up your hand. Well, not so much, but that's okay. So, how do I solve the problem? Well, in the beginning of my speech, I said that there was some disagreements between me and my parents. I think the biggest problem is that neither my parents nor I want to take a step back. Both of the sides try to complain, but the most important is there is no one listen. You know. I don't want to argue with my parents all day long, so I changed my strategy. I decided to learn to take a step back. I decided to learn to listen to the opinions of my parents instead of debate with them, and I found that surprisingly, that the conflict between me and my parents is just like wind. <laughs> Just disappear. So, I hope all of you can learn this simple retreat in your daily life. In this way, the communication between people will be more comfortable. What we do will make more sense. And of course.
course. Our lives were just because of it. We'll be better. Thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> You can do this anytime, 
anywhere, to anyone, to anything. My secret sauce, though, to take positive and difficult situations, is to talk to myself. Maybe this is good. Before I went on stage, I realized I was probably the smallest here. Then I thought, maybe this is good. Those middle school students may feel ashamed to lose a young competitor like me. Before I finish my speech, I want to share with you a real example from our idol, Lung Ping. She is a volleyball legend in the world. She was an ace spiker in the 1980s and now the head coach of the Chinese women's volleyball team. In, 28, in 2016 Rio Olympics, Long's team finished fourth in the group stage and barely made it into the quarterfinals. Almost all Chinese audiences lost confidence in them. However, they mounted an impress impressive comeback to defeat every opponent in the playoffs and finally won the gold medal. During an interview, Long Pei stated, We just kept positive until the end. Never give up, even in deep adversities. This positive attitude is the true spirit of the Chinese women's volleyball team. There will always be obstacles and challenges of life. Smile at it or cry at it. Embrace it or fear it. It's your choice. Thank you.九十三名，好，那我们请第三名来自宁波镇海焦川BBS三零九七五蔡子琪同学。The star pictures the world only in black and white. Luckily, we live in a world where colors are offered freely by nature and cosmic rays that influence our happiness and health. Can you imagine the world without it? Everything will be so dull. We will be losing the vibrations of light and true symbols of life would vanish. Without colors, Races will lose its beauty in diversity, and magnificent pink flamingos will lose its elegance. And these will be diverted away from what once used to be vibrantly colored flowers. For me, the world is constructed in different colors. I see red whenever I sense a vision, green whenever I see the grasses bloom just slightly by the wind as if it was dancing. Blue, when I feel the wind caressing my skin as I stand across the vast ocean. And even white, when I witness the compassion and purity among human beings. The legendary artist Pablo Picasso once said, Colors, like features, follow the change of the emotions. Do you know that within the roots of the India's beliefs, Focal points in the body called chakras exist. These points are connected with different colors. Red, indigo, blue, to regulate our spirituality, strength, and pleasure. Now, can we all finally agree that colors and its uses in our environment is important for our emotions and mind? We'll feel happy when we visit a place with radiant colors, right? 
So this source of good feelings comes from the breathtaking nature sceneries that the earth have given to us. Talking about nature, a huge part of the earth lungs was burning to ashes on July 2019. A place that produces 20% of the whole world's oxygen and has more than 16,000 species of trees was largely destroyed it by disforestation and man-made fires. It got me thinking, don't people have better things to do than playing with fire? Because for me, I definitely have better things to do like standing here having a speech right now. Moreover, 40% of the carbon dioxide released from the Amazon fires immediately goes to the atmosphere and have a big impact of global warming. This means the earth will get hotter and ice will melt down. So where should the polar bears go? We shouldn't keep them in our fridge, can we? So doesn't that concern you to see one vast area which is beautiful and green and now turn to plain gray ashes? Well, indeed, our physical world was connected with different colors. But truly, the color of the world is that of water, transparent and accommodating. We drip a drop of red ink, the water becomes red. We drip a drop of blue ink, the water becomes blue. The water takes in whatever color and produces whatever color we want. This is exactly what our world offers us. The color of the world changes and diversifies as it absorbs and tolerates what we do. If we protect nature, nature thrives in colors. And if we embrace human races, make time prospers in colors. And if we cherish this wonderful planet, the Earth rewards in colors. Yes, nature wildfires and other nature disasters are inevitable. But our duty as human beings is to preserve the environment we live in. As a 10-year-old girl from Ningbo, I'd like to encourage you to stand together with me to maintain the world's beauty. The infinity is in our hands. What we see, what we accept, and what we contribute makes the colors of the world. Remember, let the earth get destroyed and polluted is a net to all various colors. Thank you. Shanghai Star River. 28574 Are the judges ready? So my time starts now. Life is about duality. There's happiness, there's sadness, there's light. There is dark, there is hope, there is hurt. You may think that this is from a piece of famous literature, but it's actually from a 17-year-old school basketball star, Kevin Brill, a sufferer of depression. While well, everyone else saw an excellent basketball player at high school, Kevin was just a boy who was tortured over and over again by intense pain. You probably wonder, why don't he talk to his family or change his attitude to become more positive? Stigma, as Kevin mentioned in his speech, is why depression is often associated with shame and weakness. And stigma is the fear that prevents people from getting help. Depressed people can pretend to be normal, but they feel desperate inside, so desperate that sometimes they chose 
on their life. Just like Ken and Brio, there is a large number of young people that are experiencing depression in China. A research from Global Disease Burden shows that the percentage of depressed young people keeps increasing significantly from 2005 to 2015. I often share sad news about teenagers committing suicide because of depression. These stories have inspired me to stand here and talk about what we can do to help people with their passion. In China, many cases of depression are caused by pressure at school. The Chinese education system emphasizes greatly on grades. Teachers will make students do as much exercise as possible to get a high score on exams. One way is to criticize them and compare them with other students. I'm very disappointed that you aren't top five in class. Why do you make stupid mistakes? In the short term, this may push some students to do well in exams, but they will have a high level of anxiety and a lack of confidence in the long run. Another unfortunate common phenomenon at school is bullying. In the past, it was mostly physical bullying. With the social media getting more popular nowadays, cyberbullying also becomes more common. Random people that you may don't even know can leave rude comments to anyone they don't like. And it's unlikely for you to run away from it. It's not like you start from your internet, like in your school. The mean words will always be there as a reminder of the hard times. Another cause of teenage depression is an unhealthy family relationship. This includes a lack of communication, divorce, and even domestic violence. So what can we do? What can an individual do to make the situation better? The answer isn't complicated at all. Instead of telling the pressure to change, we can be the change. We should stop thinking that it's their problem or that there's little that we can do. First, we need to learn more about depression so that we can have a better idea of the symptoms. For instance, I didn't know that gaining weight could be a sign of depression. This type of knowledge can enable us to note details of others and reach out to help if necessary. Second, we need to learn how to talk and help people with depression. Before telling them to see a therapist, we can use our words and attitude to make them feel supported. Experiencing depression is not shameful. It does not mean that you're weak. You can overcome depression. I'm here to listen to you and help you. These simple words can make a huge difference. I hope. And then more people can be like Kevin Bill, who's open to share his experience with the entire world and stops living a dual life. I hope that more people can embrace the oppressed people with kindness and sympathy. You, me, and everyone need to believe that depression can be overcome with small actions. Be the change starting from today. Thank you. Thank 来自YK Pao 陆羽人上台演讲 My name is Kevin Liu and I'm from YK Pao School 
and I click to them, now you can this is my microphone to give my speech. <laughs> At the end of the year, my class makes wishes for next school year. Surprisingly, over half of the students said they want parents to be less strict and give more freedom. Even gay parents can have a two-month a nickname, helicopter parents. Just like helicopters, they're always flying around their kids, adoring to every move like guards. If kids make a false move, they'll shout you into the speaker, Hey! Stop doing that! Quickly! So today, I want to explore how can kids help their parents let go. First, what does it mean to let go? It means to give your child more freedom, let them do things and make choices more independently. Now, let's understand why some parents don't want to let go. Thanks to my trip to Japan, I got a chance to interview with the parents of my friends. I found that sometimes they don't want to let go because they worry about us not doing the right things and not being responsible. They worry that we can't organize our time effectively. The way that we don't have enough knowledge. The way that we'll give up on something that this is really important. The way that we aren't experienced enough. The way to worry, to worry. Whoa, that's a lot of worries. Psychologist Dr. Paul explains that our lives are like mountains. Our parents are little longer, so they hike longer up the mountain and are higher, so they have a better view. When they look down at their child, hike to the mountain, was about to go into the road, that was really, really bumpy. Do you care to read there and start yelling, Hey! Don't go down there! It's dangerous! Parents don't want to let go because they care of us and don't want us to face hard challenges and failure. But wait, is failure really such a bad thing? Actually, kids can learn from their failures. They can learn and self manage They can learn how to take in different directions and problem solve. Tom Watson, founder of the international company IBM, said, If you want to succeed, double your failure rate. Parents shouldn't be worried if their child makes mistakes. They should be worried if their child didn't make mistakes. When parents of a parent, they make it very upset when their kid scores. They make up their child hints that he or she is not capable and only matters if they have good scores. Children feel immense pressure. To get good grades and awards, so that they are capable and don't for matters. <clears throat> when parents do let go, kids have time to focus on their hobbies and won't think that parents only offer them conditional love. With unconditional love, support, and failure, we will follow our passion, perfect our hobbies, and drive to our highest potential. I have a personal experience that demonstrates this. Look at me. I'm a tall or big. Which position and floor ball do you see get play? I'm totally my school team. Surprise. Let me tell you how this began. I joined my school's floor ball team when I was in year two. I loved playing floor ball. I wanted to be my team's best goalie. The kids my said surely don't play ball. My parents also weren't sure of me being goalkeeper, but they agreed it was my choice. I took additional goalie training, never missed any practices, rising from a best player to win clean stress as an official goalkeeper in year four. After two years of hard work, I won the trophy of the best goalkeeper of the season, held my team, be the champion of the YFL Youth Club League 2019. By the way, I'm not saying that parents should give their child full freedom. I mean, you don't want to give a six or six or so freedom to eat trash food all the time, you know. Parents, please don't take this too personally. Children should know, too. We can take responsibility of our actions, listen to other people, and be corrupted. In addition, we write down a reasonable to-do list. Treat the scenes we're planning to do for today, or for this week, or longer. Parents, I know your heart's a mountain, so you worry for us. But we must love ourselves.
好，谢谢我们上一位同学的啊演讲。那等一下呢，就请我们的呃下一位同学准备，然后给我们裁判一点写评语的时间。请啊、呃，来自宁波镇海交川 BPS 三四七幺三陈思成同学上台演讲。OK， 嗯、um, ，My time starts now. One Sunday morning, I woke up and wanted to meditate on the meaning of Harry Potter's life. At Hogwarts College, so I closed my eyes again. Suddenly, I heard my mom shout, "Turn the tap! Get up and go to your badminton class!" Well, I had to give up meditating. When I got back from badminton, I turned to think more about the new spike technique the coach had just taught me. But mom yelled, "Turn the tap! Take your shower! Hurry!" <laughs> That's not bad, I thought. Because I can think about the new spike skill in the quiet shower for some time, but no sooner had I sparked one shot of in my mind than my mother opened the door, rushed into the bathroom, and said, "Time's up. Get out of the shower and do your homework right now." <laughs> There are many mornings like this in my family. My mother regards my deep thinking as a waste of time. She believes that if I have time, I better solve one more mathematical Olympiad problem. No doubt, we are in a world where the pace is always too fast. But is meditation really a waste of time? I can tell you very responsibly, no. Meditation is never ever a waste of time. In fact, it is a sure way to success. Sarah Laser, PhD of Harvard Medical School, explained in a TED speech that meditation plays an important role in many aspects, such as memory, anti-aging, and stress relief. Steve Jobs insisted on meditating every day and before making a decision. He knew that when the mind was settled, intuition would be very clear and sharp. He integrated his meditative thoughts. Into Apple products, and finally formed the design concept of minimalism and perfectionism. The American Meditation Association, yes, there is such an organization, really. The association defines meditation as a simple form for people to fully feel peace. The goal of meditation is to focus and understand your mind to achieve a high level of awareness and inner calm. Meditation is beneficial to your life and work. How come? Firstly, it relaxes you. It calms you down. This must be the most obvious benefit of meditation. The 996 learning style, that is the full-day learning style, makes the modern student's brain overloaded. But meditation gives the brain a space for relaxation, where all the worries. Anxieties and pressures are shut out. <coughs> Secondly, meditation enhances concentration, memory, and study efficiency. Over 2,000 years ago, Confucius, China's greatest educator, said, "To learn without thinking is useless. To think without learning is perilous." This is perhaps the first illustration of the relationship. Between meditation and learning, which is they complement each other. Today, after two thousand years, when the internet has flourished, when our time is fragmented and our attention is distracted, meditation 
allows the brain to focus on the present moment rather than the outside world, bring efficiency and effectiveness. Thirdly, meditation allows us to care for our heart. Meditation is reflection, thinking about beauty, pursuing love, listening to the simplest and most desired voice in your heart. Meditation allows you to slow down your steps and wait for your soul. Oh, before I finish my speech, I have to explain to you my name. My name, as you have heard in the beginning of my speech, is Chen Sichen. Chen is my surname. My given name, Sichen, means longing for success. But the first two characters, Chen Si, together, is pronounced the same as the character's meaning meditation. The last character, Chen, means success. You see, my name, which my parents gave me, means that I want success, which meditation can give me. So, I want to say to my mother, Mom, please, don't push me too hard. Give me the space for meditation, and I shall succeed. Thank you. I hope you can achieve a very good success, and it's what you want to do with your own heart. You sure you want a pink one for the opening ceremony of the spring sports meet last year? Everyone in my class chose the color for his or her shirt. I was the only boy who chose the color pink. My class teacher raised her eyebrows and asked me this question in front of the whole class. Some started sniggering, but I was not faced and answered, yes, I'm sure. I like pink. Why this colorism when it comes to pink? So today, let's see what's behind the stereotype caused by gender marketing and figure out a way to be comfortable with what we love and who we are. As much as I like me, my cousin Wenny, who is of the same age as me, hates it. She notoriously refuses anything pink, which I've cautiously avoided all these years by choosing a gift for her. She hates it. Because she thinks the girly color means weak and stupid. The opposite of her sense of self. I mean it. She's a fast runner, a great tennis player, holding national titles in math competitions. She's even preferred at the dinner table for my dear grandmother. Eat like a boy. Look at Winnie. She's just a girl. Wendy herself is a vast compliment to my grandmother's cooking. Knowing Wendy, I had a hard time understanding the idea of feminism. What's the fuss? Women are already powerful, right? Yet Wendy still has to resent the color pink to prove that power in a society still so burdened with stereotypes. According to Jessica Valenti, a feminist columnist as a guardian, modern women think pink stinks. That in our cultural expression, there is something inherently wrong with being girly. On the website Feminism in India, Aksa Khan, who vehemently dislikes the color pink, claims children grow up with the idea that being like a girl means being weak, and to be strong means becoming like a boy. Those who want to do away with gender stereotypes and boundaries, the color pink has become a battlefield. A battlefield? America's psychologist.
psychologist Tanya Lombrazo noted that only 30 to 40 percent of girls older than kindergarten age continue to identify as traditionally feminine, with many calling themselves tomboys. My cousin Wendy had just recently got a beautiful long hair cut to look more like a boy, to look stronger. She shouldn't have to do this. <coughs> Luckily, I have a cousin who challenges traditional ideas of femininity. Luckily, I got support from a teacher and was able to confidently wear my pink shirt in the school event. But it shouldn't come down to love. We can all work to fight the unnecessary sources of pressure on both men and women, girl and boy, when it comes to the color of pink. So belly all day, the Latin expression means dare to know. Wendy knows who she is and is not afraid to express it confidently. But she doesn't have to hate pain to reject the negative sense of femininity. My pink shirt. I know I love pink and won't let a little snigger get in the way of who I am. Colors and genders are not naturally linked. We're all entitled to be ourselves and live without these boundaries. So if you love pink, man, woman, girl or boy, you can still love it and be a powerful woman or a powerful man. You can love blue and be a sensitive woman or a sensitive man. When some asks whether you want the pink one, you know what to say. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, by the way, Thank So this ready? My time starts now. One afternoon two weeks ago, on our way back home, Dad was driving, I was listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks, and Mom was looking at her phone. Suddenly, Mom asked, If your dad and I divorced, who would you live with? I cast her a look. Dad, of course. She jumped and raise her voice. Why? What for? Because Dad accompanies me, I answered. But I am here with you too, she argued. True, I said, but you're always looking at your phone. Dad plays chess with me. Mom complained, I cook your food, wash your clothes, drive you to school, sit by your side when you do homework, I do everything for you, and you say, this is not company? No, my heart insisted. This is not company. What kind of company are our parents giving us? Take me, for example. My mom cooks my food, washes my clothes, does all the trifles, but she brushes me aside, claiming that I'm useless in these things. She drives me to and from school, but she turns on the audiobooks the moment I get into the car, claiming that I need to use every minute to study. She does talk to me, but most of the time, she is right and I am wrong. She does sit or stand by my side, but her hands and her eyes are always on her phone. Mom, you call this company I call this false company. It is not the kind of companionship I want. 
People live in a busy world today. Parents often find very little time to accompany their children. And when they do, they're mostly only urging, pushing and spurring their poor kids to do better on their schoolwork. People live in two worlds today. The virtual world in the smartphone is much more interesting. Lots of parents have their eyes riveted on the screens and neglect their children. Day by day, children will feel lonely and will grow up lonely. Do you know why there is depression, suicide and even killing? Because people are lonely, because people don't receive authentic companionship. Statistics show that lack of parents' companionship drives children into the dark depths of stress, pessimism and despair where they suffer distresses from the lighter thinking disorders to the more serious feeling of meaninglessness and even suicide. See, these are the consequences of not giving your children real companionship. Then, ladies and gentlemen, what kind of companionship can really benefit your children, both physically and emotionally? Well, as a child myself, I would prefer my parents to accompany me for my sake, for my hobbies, and for my interests. For instance, I like playing chess, and I love that playing it with me. Physical company is good, but spiritual and emotional companionship is what really matters. A Harvard study shows that if a child receives sufficient authentic companionship, he will develop a positive character and gradually build a great relationship with others. According to the study, the longer you accompany your child, the greater success he will achieve in his future career. With authentic companionship, children will feel that they are important Children will grow up with the self-trust that they can change something. And this is the basic motivation for hard work and success. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that you all want your children to live a happy life. I believe that you will give them your attention, that you will give them your companionship. So a very happy life they shall have. Back to my mom's question. I know that my mom's just testing me with a silly divorce question, but her whimsical test and my hearty answer surely made her think about companionship and surely will benefit both our mother-son relationship and her relationship with my dad. And surely our happy life as a family will go on and on and on because we have real, true, authentic companionship. Thank you.